Welcome back to the 628 Dirt Rooster channel where hobby beekeeping is a way of life. We got called for this hive removal here. And we get out here and there's two. The guy was not aware that there were two. He just thought there was that one above the panel there. This is a new setup. It's been here for approximately a month brand spanking new the bees moved in before anybody else got a chance to attention mobile home buyers need i say more that one's next dude this was supposed to be a new swarm <laughs> This is not a new swarm. Uh, I'm guessing three weeks. That was a decent sized swarm there when they came in. You ready for another one? This is gonna be the biggest one. You got a piece of a frame? You want me to lay it on? <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. Don't go any further, but you just straighten it out. <laughs> You might have the queen down there. There's comb built way up in there, it looks like. Yeah. <coughs> I can't tell the distance on this. Probably. Feet over. We pulled uh, the buck of the comb out of that spot right there, and I had a bunch retreat. And as I was chasing them, I realized that there's another section of big section of comb in here. I mean, big in relation to a new swarm. So we got bees coming in here. Uh, a bulk of comb here, another bunch of comb here, you can hear them through the belly cloth, and another, the next entrance is here. So you got an entrance here, entrance here, I don't think it's the same colony, it could be, but it's not usual for them to travel in a space that far to work. I can see that on my camera, but I can't reach it with the back hose, and of course there's comb in there to get out, so I got to cut the edge of that belly cloth. I gotta cut it in a way where it's repairable. Somebody's gotta put it back together and I'm not gonna be the one here to do it. Might as well make it easy for whoever is putting it back together. The back is set right at their entrance. All these foragers coming back in, they're just going right in the back. We're gonna have to let the back there and run off. <laughs> nah, that's not gonna happen. You know how I like to show the surroundings on a cutout. <laughs> there's the there's the home. Real nice setup. This is what's in bloom right now. That's Tai Tai. 
this is a close up of it. And for a water source, Man, what a beautiful little creek to be, to have a backyard on. It's awesome. Looks like some kind of a mix of fiberglass and rock wool insulation. Tuck it back up under there. We've removed one hive over here and we're moving over here, continue right on over here. And we found another hive over here, which you can see stops right there. If you can focus and see it. And then standing here, I'm going to turn around. And then another one starts right here and carries on up into somewhere, don't know where yet. vacuum set up at this entrance over here catching them as they came in but since we had to move down and work down there we just set the basket up here so that the foragers coming in would be drawn to the smell of the colony we got a good clump there vacuumed up so everybody's coming in and clinging to the basket <laughs> How much tai tai is there, you ask? I'm glad you asked. It's everywhere. <laughs> that back wood line over there is just covered. I vacuumed them down to a minimal amount, and right now I'm just kind of leaving them alone to let them migrate to wherever they're going to go so I can kind of determine if I need to cut back any more insulation. I certainly don't want to do any more damage to this house than I absolutely have to so they look like they're all coming to this center hive here. I'm going to leave them alone for 10 minutes or so and let them gather up and then we'll reevaluate. I'm not going to pull any comb just yet. There's a good sized cluster right there but those are moving off down this way, so I think maybe this is the end of them. And they're just using that far end as an entrance. I'm seven, eight foot from, from the corner down there where they're coming in. So hopefully they're just traveling that far to build, which is pretty unusual. They're making their way though. Got the little march going on.
the end. <laughs> All right, not the end yet. What we're doing is putting a deep, <laughs> two deeps on top of it. We're gonna open the basket, put a lid Spanks on it. it for the bees. Get a lid ready. Hold up, behind you. Yeah, uh, right behind you. Okay. Open the lid, stick a lid on. Open the lid of the basket, stick a lid on the box. <laughs> Cover it up. And we'll keep them <coughs> caged up for a couple days. This one right here we just let out. And uh, we don't need another box. We had a bunch of lost bees. Two more boxes. Setting up house on some drawn comb that I had leaning up out here. And I just moved them into this nuke. This is about where the frames were sitting. They were leaning on that old microwave there. And probably 1,000, 1,500 bees, 2,000, 2,071 to be exact. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, that's what I did was I had three drawn frames that they were congregating on and I just stuck them in this nuke box here and I will put a queen cell on them or a queen whichever we run across first and this here the big behemoth mama basket we're gonna set it's full I mean it's heavy oh, can you pick it up with that arm there let's get the sun behind it so you can get kind of a picture that there's no way to even see through the basket so they'll get overheated if you leave them like that too long we're gonna put them in two deeps and we got to do the same setup two frames i mean uh, two empty boxes put the basket in it put a uh, box lid on and tape them in for a couple of days so they don't go anywhere because we don't know if we got the queen or not we were vacuuming we were looking but i never see her ne never saw her just assuming she's either in there or dead on the ground where we were working. All right, one of the big questions is how is your BVAC built? And I've been saying I was gonna do a video on it and I just never have gotten around to it. So I'll give you a little peek at it. I, I do still intend to do a video sometime in the next five years. So for those of you that wanna try to build your own, it's a, uh, Two pieces of plywood cutting around. The bottom flap is just a piece of vinyl X cut on the outside and the same thing on the inside. And then hardware cloth stapled around the outside with some structure, wooden structure up the sides, the top. There. Cut in there. Yeah, the bottom's, bottom's notched. The top is just same round piece of plywood notched for the structure and then hinged and just a jerry-rigged lock with a pull loop and a lift strap so what this does this whole basket sits down into a five gallon bucket that nozzle right there sticks through the bottom of the bucket and that would be the intake side where it pulls bees in. So here's a vacuum cleaner piece here, piece of electrical conduit running to the bottom of the bucket. Screenshot, screenshot. I'm just gonna let you look at this real close, real quick. This is just a upside down five gallon bucket with the bottom cut out of it for a stand on the top of three buckets. Yeah, three buckets total to do this. On the top of this other bucket with that vacuum cleaner piece <coughs> bolted in on top of that electrical conduit. And then the top is just the top edge of another bucket cut down and slid into here and screwed in place. So uh, vacuum is pulled through the top. The bees come through the bottom in through the X cut flap in that basket and into the basket. And then once we pull it out, we usually check to make sure the flaps are closed. So we've got 
three baskets if the flaps are worn and don't close we just put tape over them when we're done vacuuming the top of this bucket that goes to the vacuum cleaner is just a five gallon bucket lid with just a homemade attachment here there you go there it is sitting in the bucket and you just push it down on top of the flap Take the tape off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't forget to take the tape off or you won't get any bees. And this snaps on to there. You get the picture? Squeeze it right here. Don't try pushing down on buckets because then you collapse. This is what you wind up with. Yeah, you wind up with uneven bucket just like that which is what that's from this end goes to your vacuum and then your hose that you suck bees with attaches to the bottom down there and that's it that's all there is to it you can buy these hoses at Lowe's Home Depot wherever and you know maybe eventually I mean, it's not maybe. We got to build another BVAC. This is about the third design we've done. The first one or two had butterfly nets in them, and then this one's got the screen basket. And I've got some ideas for some upgrades on this one. And when I when I get the time, I will build it and I will video it. So. Bees marching over for some reason. Yeah. Okay. That's just one that got shook off, I think. You ready? <clears throat> Occasionally we do shake them out of the cages, but it's just Put easier when we don't have to have the cages right away. It's easier to do it like this. You ready? Go ahead. Pull the lid off. Pull the lid off. They didn't fly. I just want to see if I can see down in there. All right. Too many of them in there to fly. We really need to dump that one. They may be dead before they get out of there. No, they look good. They were coming out. Okay. They just weren't flying late in the day. Just as sort of an FYI, don't give your bees space to build anything above the frames. This is a cutout. There's only uh, frames in here. This is the vac basket here, so I got to take these top two baskets off, top two boxes off. Here's what they'll do. They're all in the lid and they're drawing comb from the lid right now. So I gotta shake them off of here and get them in that bottom box. Get my basket off. I don't like to leave a vac basket in like this more than two days because they'll start building comb on it. So I'll take my basket and set it up up here and let them walk in. I'll start smoking them and get them, get them headed that direction. I need to fill that gap between the bottom board and the deck there. And I'm not a betting man, but I'd bet money that the queen is in the basket still. She hasn't found her way into the box. Yeah, they're still marching. Last few, last few hundred <laughs> are coming out. I would have dumped them, but I didn't know where the queen was, and I didn't want to be shaking them and jerking the basket around and chance damaging or killing her. So I've just it's been a lazy Sunday afternoon, so I've just been kind of letting them walk in as they feel like. In the last five minutes or so, there was a cluster that didn't want to move, so I just set my smoker down here next to the basket, and they're all about. Yeah, now.